I appeared suddenly in the in the frame. I'm gonna say again hello to everybody because I'm just gonna cut that shit out because I wasn't there. Um, <laughs> and welcome to People's Exhibit. This is the only show that still uses uh, Amiga computers to run every thing we need for our production and joining me today is our Amiga expert, Amiga wizard really, Ed Hicks. Yep, I know all about Amiga, Amigos. Yeah, um, yeah Amigos like from Mexico. Uh, uh, we have a lot of news today for some reason, I don't know how this happens, so uh, you know, we could be here for a while, so if you guys you know, want to grab a drink or some cookies and milk, you know, it's all, it's all good. As always, as every day, I uh, see Ed is eating some cookies right now. Yeah, I got some Jaffa cakes, don't, don't even fret. Yeah, excellent. Um, so, as we usually try to do, we are actually going to be successful with this today. We're going to start with some Kickstarter news. Uh, Shenmue yeah. 3's uh, campaign ended and they turned out they made 750 billion Swiss francs. Um, <laughs> well, okay, in reality they, they made... They pushed over 6 million, right? Yeah, they got uh, 6.333, uh, uh, not point, but whatever, yeah, so 6... Million three hundred thirty-three thousand and uh, some some leftover after that as well. Almost seventy thousand backers. That's pretty nuts. Yeah, it's pretty intense. Um, the funny thing is they never got to ten million, and the reason that's funny uh, is because uh, they said that if they get to ten, that's when the real Shenmue three is going to be made. And then they said afterwards, kind of like well, after people already paid like three million in. Um, yeah. And they never got there. Uh, the, there was this uh, sort of a semi quote. You know how there's like factoids? There was a quotoid. So, uh, just kind of <laughs> quotoids. quotoids circulating uh, from one uh, video game website to another where, oh, the Sony is going to pay, pay most of the money. Um, and Ooh. then a lot of people were like, well, no, no one ever said Sony's going to pay most of the money. And um, apparently, Sony's just there. Or officially, they're there for like, oh, we'll take probably technical support and shit. Um, and we'll push it out the door, publishing wise, <laughs> like the ones the money's going to. So yeah, publishing? exactly. Something. But it's weird because you can't make a game that they want to make for six million dollars. It's not possible. So, um, I yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I think they maybe. I don't, do you think they hope to get more money? It's a bit strange to me. I think that. Uh, well, I suspect that this will be. This could easily be used to say, look, we got this many people guaranteed, we got this much uh, interest, this much press. If they really needed to get the money to make the game that it should be, I think uh, it's probably a good opportunity for investors at this point. I, I don't know uh, what how that is ethically at this point, where you're like, you promise one thing and then you go around yeah. doing some other stuff to hopefully do some other, you know, like for them to fulfill the promise that they made. It seems a bit odd the amount of money they got now, unless they go and do more work. But it should be that at the moment that you know the money's sent over, and in fact, the moment the promise is made, that they are held to that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, even even if they manage to to kind of wheel and deal and get it made, it's a little shady. Yeah, exactly. Yes, because they, I I feel like they should have immediately been like, you know, we are trying to prove, like, do what they're say what they're actually doing. We're trying to prove that yeah. there is belief in this game. And here we're going to prove it by this amount of money and backers, and Sony's going to give the rest, and then everybody's going to be. I think the people will be okay with that more yeah, I think so. than now when they have to eventually say something about yes, there is outside investment and a lot of it. Otherwise, they're going to make like a you know Shenmue three for mobile with six million dollars. People need to be honest, and uh, people have been saying this. This sort of seems to be the current now of like um, indie devs responding to uh, what happens on Kickstarter is people need to actually be honest with the accounting because everyone loses when they say I guess we can make a game with this uh, please don't be angry it's just you, you lose trust in people people get the wrong idea about how much things cost and you don't actually end up getting the good games you want and also then crowdfunding gets a bad name and then games that could be made with like money and trust don't get made because people abuse it yeah exactly uh, well, there's another story we have today about Kickstarter. This one's a bit, I don't know, Ooh. sadder perhaps? This is the Zelda one where they uh, wanted to make a Zelda animated series, uh, oh, started a Zelda Kickstarter, yeah. made one episode or something, I think, and it, it's it's even on YouTube. I believe you can just watch it. Um, there may even be a link in if you're watching this on YouTube in, in the I description. I like that there's a screenshot of it on fire. Burning, yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah I, there you I, go. That's, Perfect. That's why I went for it. Um, so they pulled it down 
almost immediately, it seems like. I think it was like day or two days or maybe something like that. Because people, a lot of people went, so we don't have the rights to this. Um, and then they, it, yeah. it, it was funny also that the guy or the they some of the people who were behind this project couldn't believe that they could have a Kickstarter there, and they were like openly discuss, discussing on the Kickstarter how how why are they not going after us, um, which was strange. And then it was stranger. The main guy who was I think the most communicating like directly as the team behind it um, made a poll or a straw poll or whatever where they asked people should I keep this going or should I cancel it, and everyone said like well eighty percent said you should keep going and make it anyway. And then he cancelled it as a result. So <laughs> that is it was that supposed to be some kind of out? Like oh I, shit, I need to I yeah, get yeah. out of this without And he was hoping least. maybe the people would be like, Yeah, yeah, go, just cancel it. But that doesn't make any sense because Yeah, exactly. It, it just makes it look an arsehole instead of just like, Oh, this is against the law, so I'm gonna obey the law and not carry on. It's a shame. It's a shame that people wanted it. They go out as a hero, sort of, but an idiot still. But with this one, are they trying to do like, oh, no one really wanted it. Uh, don't worry about it. No, 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 lawyers. No, it's fine. No one wants it. No one wants it. It doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. It's not yeah. I, I didn't even make it. It may as well not be there. Nobody saw it. Nobody watched it. It might not be Zelda. You don't know. You didn't see it. <laughs> I think it was called yeah. Zelda Motion or something very generic. Mm, you see, five letters into that, they've got a lawsuit. <laughs> Maybe they could have like star, star, whatever, asterisk, 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 and motion. And Z, asterisk, asterisk, yeah. asterisk. Everyone's like, what kind of slur is that? I haven't heard that one. What we getting with Z? The, the, the word they meant was zunt. Anyway. Um, zunt. Yeah. Uh, we are going to go next to uh, a man we talked about almost for three or four episodes. Mr. Three weeks running. Mr. John Smedley, three weeks running, uh, the ex-CEO of Daybreak, uh, which was previously known as Sony Online Entertainment, uh, has become that, an ex-CEO of Daybreak. Um, well, the official version is that he quit. Uh, if you haven't seen our previous episodes, uh, what happened is, or maybe you haven't heard about what was going on, uh, he had some uh, online confrontation, almost, well, sort of one-sided, because he was... Well, I guess not one side. Who'd been he was, yeah. yeah, he was yelling at someone who's been arrested. Yeah, they were well put, Ed. And um, as a result, they got hacked even harder or something. And yeah. their servers, their game servers, were like DDoSed. Um, and now um, the news of his res resigning follows, uh, which is, um, I, I don't know, I guess logical in some way that this has come to pass. I, I was wondering today because you know this company transitioned for out of Sony, so it became non-Sony company, right? By previously while being owned by Sony, and he he started his work there. So I was wondering if the current board of directors was kind of just using him, in my opinion, fucking up online uh, and being ragey on like on Reddit as like a pretext for like getting their own men in in charge. I don't know, maybe. It, I, that sounds like a cool conspiracy. Yeah, because if I was in, in like you know in above him and I wanted to get rid of him, this would be the perfect moment. I'd be like, oh, you're bringing negative shit to our company name. Bye. Uh, but we'll make it look like you resigned. Another interesting yeah. bit about this is uh, I found uh, I was looking for the guy he was having the beef with Zekiel, uh, Julius, whatever his name is, and uh, I found this image. Uh, where both of their pictures are sort of juxtaposed against each other. Um, you thinking time machine? I'm I'm thinking. Um, did he have a kid in Finland? And okay. is this like a father son issue? Because they look like a lot alike. Like in the, I know it's just but I one picture. Paris right? was a eunuch. Yeah, I know, right? Maybe he. I mean, he became a eunuch. You don't. You're not born a eunuch, right? So, people freeze sperm, all that stuff. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Versus green. <laughs> the fucking Street Fighter. <laughs> I think that's. Oh, that's amazing. That is potentially what they were going with. But yeah, they, oh. yeah, but they look. I, I know. Again, this, this is just like this image, and probably they don't look in other images very similar. But I, well, well, well uh, chosen by whoever did the Street Fighter thing. Why in this report is his name quoted as Ryan on this image? Name's Julius in this image. I don't know. Maybe maybe somebody is speaking on the news report where this screenshot is. I mm, I don't know. I I think his <laughs> anyway. name is Julian, but maybe I'm I'm mistaken. Yeah, I think it's Julius. Yeah, yeah. That's what it says on this article, anyway. So that screenshot's weird. 
these faces reminded me of another face we had to talk about anyway today. Uh, so we might as well switch to that. Uh, this is either Simon Phillips or Philip Simon. I forgot what his name is, but this guy and continuing the theme of CEOs is the new CEO of 22 cans. Is that ah. the name? Yeah. Or yeah. as you said in the, in the docket, uh, someone stopped kicking the can. I'm not, I'm not sure I can fully agree. I don't, have you read the article? Um, yeah, well, I mean, supposedly he's the one who the buck stops at, that yeah. the can rolls to a halt next to his foot <laughs> guy, and yeah. he picked it up and went, oh, oh. <laughs> The can stops and here. something inside, something horrible. Um, the funny thing about the article was how much he was swearing in it. I don't know if you noticed it, but um, he said, well, he, there were quote like, there was like, it wasn't a straight-up interview, but it was like the journalist saying stuff and then quoting him and saying stuff. A lot. Yeah, yeah, and he, I never, I mean, I haven't Wait, read. He says... Yeah, oh, he says, he says cunt twice. I was like, really? God damn! Like they, oh. so, so Molyneux went from like, oh god, I don't know what to do. I'm just gonna lie to everyone to like, I'm gonna hire a guy who all he says is fucking cunt, and and that's will solve my problems, really? Listen, Andro, listen. The fucking step up and you can't deny it. <laughs> he used to do, uh, Mr. Simon Phillips, or Philip Simon, uh, used to uh, be a CEO before he was a CEO. Surprise. Uh, yeah. And uh, he was a CEO. A over... serial CEO. He's a serial CEO. He's a mass, mass CEO. Um... <laughs> Uh, he would. He worked for some company that used to not even make games, but like port game. I guess translate games for Chinese mobile games for Chinese market or like something like that. I think it was yeah, some kind of localization company CEO, and then he dumped that position to work f for Twenty Two Cans. I don't know how badly their business was going, but apparently pretty badly. I know. I think so. Anyway. So, uh, and the article is like huge. It's like a non-ending stream of him going like, "Well, okay, mate, yeah." We fucked up, yeah? But, and it's like, just that sort of phrase repeated many times about different things, about the development of Goddess. It's weird, I feel like I read this article, but now that I'm looking at it again, maybe I just skimmed it at work and pasted it in and hope <laughs> you read it. <laughs> maybe, I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm seeing all this stuff, and I'm like, oh yeah, guys. <laughs> he, he wrote them a letter, like, to, I think, so, Eurogamer reached out to him and he's like, oh, it seems like, hey, Simon Phillips or Philip Simons, you are a new CEO of 22 cans. Um, now, only three cans have after everyone quit. And uh, what do you, you know, what do you say? And then he wrote them this letter, which, the second sentence has the word cunt in it. I, I, <laughs> it's just like Malcolm Tucker at the <laughs> School of, of, of Public Relations. Maybe, yeah. I like, Jesus, wow, like, the, what an opener. That's great. And he says, and he reminded me, I don't know if you've seen uh, Sexy Beast. It's a British Beast. British film about a dude, like he used to be a gangster or something, like he used to cr right. safe cracker dude who lives in Spain. And then like some other British gangsters reach out to him to like, oh, we need you for another war job. And it's like this confrontation between... Is this one of those uh, fucking Guy Ritchie kind of things? Kind of, but it's, I forgot who made it. It's the same guy who made... Um, under the skin is like about a alien in Scotland trying to uh, take meat from uh, lonely men. <laughs> what a bad name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Anyway, so in there, there's a scene where this gangster arrives and, and, and he gets really upset at one point and he just starts yelling, are you saying I'm a cunt? And that's like, this is what like, like the image I had, where this guy starts that letter saying like, if I were to say that, I would be a cunt. I was like, okay, man, all right, J Jesus. I, I guess it's a bit <laughs> also like that bit from uh, In Bruges. <laughs> yeah, 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 In, in Bruges. Yeah, it's, it's like that similar style. I think Sexy Beast is in some ways trying to be that, but, right. but a bit more like, oh, British guy in Spain enjoying the sun. Yeah, socks and sandals, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> He's really burnt. Though. I don't know if they burnt the guy, the actor in the movie, oh, but no, like he. Just, like, painted him up red. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. You, you fucking know you've got either a Brit or a German when you've got some fucking burnt guy in sandals. <laughs>
Oh, I don't even know what's uh, what's next in this thing. Oh god, the list is unending. It um, is a fucking long list today. Let's go to Evo. Uh, no, let's not go to Street Fighter News first, where they announced a new character that should be on screen momentarily. Oh, I, yeah, for- yeah, I forgot yeah. his name already. He starts with an S. You remember his name? Oh god. Sekiel? Sekale? The- Sekal? Mm, let me quickly look it up. <laughs> So, uh, he has a lot of hair, mostly yeah. on his head, and um, he's very much, uh, it seems like a... Nikali? Oh, is it Nikali? I thought it was Sikali, never mind, okay. N-E-C-A-L-L-I. Cool. So, uh, what what do you know about him, Ed? I, I know he's a grappler, uh, I know those aren't technically dreads, that's just hair bound up, and uh, when he uh, does his V trigger, he explodes into a kind of Super Saiyan mode, and I guess is more effective looks kind of interesting it's a brand new character for sure um and uh yeah i don't know looks looks pretty cool looks kind of explosive but no idea how they really play yet i i bet he has a revenge backstory (laughs) (laughs) i don't know he looks demonic i think he probably has some kind of demon backstory possibly some science gone wrong backstory Uh, maybe science demon my favorite yeah Uh, they also announced uh, their business model for Street Fighter Five, oh, yeah. uh, which is that you can earn all your DLC stuff or whatever, all the new stuff, all the characters, all the stuff that they release in game yeah. without paying. Yeah. If you wanted to pay, you can, as I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you can also just play a lot and unlock that stuff. Uh, and it seems like most people are welcoming this change. Yeah, there's uh, the way the uh, details of it are. They've got two in-game currencies. I don't know what they're called, so I'm going to call them fun bucks and um, guilty dollars. And the, uh, <laughs> and you get fun bucks from playing, and that's kind of like a low impact currency. Yeah. And these can both be used for the same things. It's just that one, uh, the uh, guilty dollars you buy with uh, real money. Yeah. And hence um, the name. Yeah. And so you, you can get DLC with that. <laughs> so it's like some interim <laughs> currency for some reason. It's not. They're not called cool that. <laughs> they they're called yeah, something we, just as silly almost, but yeah. They're called something fucking stupid. Yeah. You know? um, but yeah, every single piece of DLC uh, characters, costumes, etc. That's that's uh, that's extra from the main game. You can just get by playing the main game. You never have to buy anything more than the disc if you want. Uh, but you can at any point just go fuck it. I need a new character right now. I need those costumes right now. Or I want to support it right now and get that. And one other thing I heard. I haven't confirmed this, but I did hear this from someone uh, sort of somewhat in the know, was that you would potentially be able to do money matches with uh, fun bucks. Oh, because it's called pretty cool. fighting money, I, th- I think I remember Fight now. money, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or yeah. fight money. That, um, fucking um, Balrog says, oh, sorry, Boxer says when, when he gets knocked out. Yeah. So it, it, you get fight money for fighting, obviously. So it seems logical again that if you were to fight in multiplayer, you could get fight money for it. Yeah. Maybe absolutely. you could somehow influence, like, bet on yourself or whatever, double the money or whatever, something <laughs> like that. You know, I, it would be a fun um, mechanic. I would put that in if I was making that game. Yeah. So uh, that all sounds super cool, and it does address all the problems with like the fact that the patching was tied to like bought updates, and you you saw that the sales for the first one was like. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but I know that each time they came out with like Super, Arcade Edition, Ultra, whatever, um, it was half the number of people bought the game each time. Mm. And that's not really sustainable for the, having the latest version of the game being played by less and less people. That's yeah. bad for tournaments and publicity and people getting involved and joining. And so everyone's kind of realized this. So the, the way fighting games kind of went was that loads were coming out, loads of two, way back in the day, loads of 2D ones coming out. No one really knew anything. It was super hard to get into. And um, they all got released at the same time and stuff. Nobody really communicated. There wasn't much of a scene. And so they kind of died out. Then Street Fighter 4 came back and kind of reinvigorated fighting games sort of since 2009. But it has all of these problems, which are now only just getting solved. But they're also being solved by uh, people like Killer Instinct have a really, really good model. That's kind of a season pass thing, but actually does work very well with fighting games versus some other things. Yeah. And, you know, we've got the upcoming uh, Rising Thunder, which we'll talk a bit more about later. Um, so people are getting the idea that you can make an interesting, complex, uh, challenging, competitive game without all these weird, non-necessary barriers to entry. Is, is uh, Street Fighter V going to be out for next Evo? 
Um, yes, because it's coming out next spring, and Evo is in summer, so it's cool. going to be the sloppiest Evo ever. <laughs> Excellent. Um, this Evo was this week. This week? Last yeah. week? Uh, last weekend. Last weekend, yeah. And I watched some of it for the first time, and it was great. Um, yeah. We have two clips here. There's one, and the second one is going to follow. This one is... Uh, this is the final, isn't it? Yeah, this uh, is where... Game of the versus um, Momochi. Momochi, yeah. Um, and... Thinking about characters, I guess. <laughs> yeah, this is before they have the uh, pause fuck up. Oh, uh, boy. Where, where uh, Razor lost the tournament. And the second clip, <laughs> I don't know if we'll get to it, but this one's pretty long, but there's another one there um, where they take one of the guys takes off his shirt and then hangs it on the other guy and then he takes oh, off his God. shirt and then yeah. he levels him. Um, some dude puts his shirt on Punko. Yeah. Some dude who I will never learn the name of, by the way. Shirtless. It's just kind of shirtless. <laughs> shirtless and forgettable. Yeah. You should have like the sponsor name, you know, like they have the abbreviation of the sponsor name in the in the beginning, and then something, whatever they are, you know, Mad Cats shirtless. <laughs> Evil genius shirtless. Yeah. <laughs> or those are team names, or usually, or are they actually brand names for like something? Is Evil Genius uh, make anything, or are they just a team? I think Evil Geniuses is a team, but there is like, I think, I actually no, I think, uh, isn't Monster the, because hmm. uh, K. Brown did that stunt at CEO where he uh, did the kind of Steve Austin intro, I believe, and uh, he had people throw, usually Steve Austin basically uh, catches some cans of beer from the crowd, opens them both and then shakes them over his face. Yeah. He took two cans of Monster and did this, and I <laughs> believe uh, K. Brand is an evil genius uh, player. Mm. So, could be linked. I know there's like a Red Bull team, and so you obviously know the, deal yeah. the sponsorship there. They're all over the place. So, I, I'm not super certain. Obviously, Razor and Mad Cats are controller-based teams. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm yeah, not sure if know. evil genius is... Maybe they're just a team, because there are Warhub just teams as well. Starcraft team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love rolling that factoid out. This is the bit where uh, the judge gets involved because the <laughs> pause was pressed because the Razor controller fucked up. And yeah, that's rough. Yeah, Momochi was penalized for it. Yeah, so if you pause in a game, uh, you lose the round. It used to be that you lost the set, so the mm. best of three uh, that you were particularly you were playing at that at that point. Um, it was, and it... yeah, this played out in an interesting way. It, it seemed like the people commenting on this were also confused about what the hell is going which, which was the right, what, what would happen now. Uh, yeah. Because one of them was saying, like, no, he loses the game. And then the other one's like, no, he loses the match or what, round, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so what they ended up doing was uh, having he lost, the round. he lost the round. Yeah. But they had to do it by timeout because if he beat the shit out of him for free to kill him, he would have gained a lot of meter. So mm. it would have been losing the round and a disadvantage in the next round. Yeah. And so he just hit him enough to go below his current health, and then they waited the clock. And so you've got these two fucking, the top two Street Fighter players <laughs> in the world, and you've got 200,000 people on Twitch watching, you've got the 10,000 people in the hall, and they're all just staring at the screen, watching this <laughs> countdown, everyone's just sweating. And then he pauses again. Oh god, yeah! Yeah, his second, there, was a, they... there was a second pause. Yeah, um, and at that point they shot put the fucking controller out the window and get something else and I think Razor <laughs> It was funny that they didn't yeah, that he got the Mad Cats after that. Um it yeah. was it was funny that he didn't have another one. Like I would imagine if I go you know, if I ever go to I, I would never but go probably because I'm too old, but like, you know, if people you know how people bring their own keyboards like to Counter Strike chain tournaments? Like, yeah. the kind of thing, like, you bring another one, this is, like, the, the toppest you can get, like, you can't just go with one controller, what if it breaks? I guess it never failed him before or something. Maybe, but yeah. But I think I saw, wasn't there a tweet? I think I saw a Momochi tweet, thanks to Mad Cats. <laughs> <laughs> so, damn. Yeah, I think uh, Razer isn't his team, so he just had Razer controller, like, oh, he's... Oh, he just had a Razer, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's too awkward. Though, yeah, yeah, I don't, for, um, I don't think they were his... Words. I don't. I don't actually know what Momochi's team is, to be honest. But let's have a look. Momochi. He's an evil genius. Oh, there you go. So yeah, probably not. It does. I. I think Razor has their own team. I'm not even sure. I don't know. I. I believe they do. <clears throat> Razor do because I, 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 it. Um. There was a Street Fighter Five like mini tournament. Uh, at was it Comic Con? No, it was before that. Uh, there was some Capcom event where, the, and I remember that it was uh, Evil Genius playing against Razor, playing against 
uh, somebody else, and I believe Razor Team actually did win. Oh, okay, cool. Because I don't think they made it into top eight in in here. Uh, if I yeah, I don't know. I didn't see any anyone specifically. Wait, oh yeah, Razor Sian was would have come close. He he was on one of the excellent adventures. Mm. Um, but I don't think I, no, he wasn't in top eight. I saw on Twitter that apparently people cried after winning or losing or whatever, but I never actually saw this. Like you know, in any of the videos, did you see people crying? Like one of the the, the competitors crying. I know last year I saw uh, the winner of KI uh, cry, but didn't see any of these guys cry. Mm. Okay, yeah, no, I didn't see either. I don't know who they were referring to. I just saw some person saying like, "Oh, this I I love when boys cry and hug, and that's why I watch Evo." Um, I guess I guess <laughs> Infiltration hugged Gamer B after their amazing game. No, no, no. It's I think the hug the hugging incident, main hugging incident, was when. Um, Oh man, Justin Wong? Is it Justin Wong? Yep, was playing Wong. Uh, Marvel something something against the other dude and the other dude wins. And then they, they, he gets like ganked by hugs. <laughs> Justin Wong, NBC. So that would have been Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Probably, yeah. Uh, he had like Storm and he, the other guy had Hulk and so it was... It looked oh, that's be... right. It was the guy who went on to win. Yeah, because yeah. Hulk's considered a very weak actor. In fact, his whole team was like really weird stuff like Modok, Hulk and Hagger. Which you don't usually see whenever yeah. you're seeing like a uh, high ranking MVC player. You see a lot of Storm, Doctor Doom, Magneto, uh, and these characters. And uh, yeah, Justin Wong didn't make it into top eight. And he's last year's winner. And he's generally in a lot of things. Like he's always in Street Fighter as well. And yeah, he, he didn't make it to top eight. But yeah, supposedly um, defeated by this slightly odd team. Mm hmm. And yeah, so that there was this, there was the, there was a thing where the guy won and they were jumping around and like I don't know twenty people were hugging him at the same time. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I guess he was big a big man puddle. Yeah, big man puddle exactly. Um, <laughs> let's move on to Rising Thunder, which is a horrible game for a name for a potentially interesting game, um, yes. which is going to be the. Is it true that this is the first fighter made for PC? That... Yeah, it's it's made in such a way that you can uh, play it with a keyboard. Uh, it's totally acceptable to play with a keyboard because these special moves are not bound to motions; they are merely bound to keys with a cooldown. But is it? Has no one ever? I mean, are there no games that may were made for PC and not for any consoles? Like, are they? Do they? There might be that. I feel like maybe that robot fighter that Simon keeps talking about. I played it. I don't remember what name it is, would, but would you? Consider, oh god, I can't remember what it was called. Would you have considered that um, PC I, uh, designed? I, no, it was just like a normal control for it, I think. I, I mean, I played it with a keyboard. Dive kick, technically, in that it, it could be used, done with anything equally well, and the, possibly Nid Hog, maybe? Is Dive Kick on any other platform? Dive Kick's on uh, everything, as far as I know. Let me, let me check that. I'm not super certain now. Okay. But yeah, so it's PC in the sense that it can be easily played with on PC without having yeah. any problems yeah, yeah. okay cool. that kicks also on sony stuff and xbox yeah, yeah. so this is uh, by That's one it. of the guys who were well, it's like several people obviously but one of the main dudes is who used to work on street fighter 4 i believe um and oh, uh, seth killian yeah and then he um kind of got well he was for you know he, he, he apparently spent 20 years in you know dedicated you know, 20 years of his life to fighting games so he finally wanted to make something that didn't have that um uh, barrier of you know you have, trying to learn the moves and trying to master your fine motor skills with your with your hands. And yeah, you can, all you the just execution play stuff. Yep, exactly. So this is going to be uh, actually the um, beta or whatever the uh, public access the to this alpha, I technical alpha maybe. Yeah, <laughs> um, is going to be is going to open in three days or five days i think 28th yeah, of july 28th, I believe. um and um it's going to be free to play when it's done uh and only cosmetic stuff you can buy and it's going to yeah. be um like i said just for pc which is very interesting it doesn't look like amazing so far in terms of its design like the robots are a bit like uh, but um i like how it moves i don't necessarily like how the robots looked mm. nihilistic taste thing but they don't it's not it's low quality assets. It's just not my kind of look. A lot of people in the comments to this video uh, on YouTube were complaining about like low frame rate on the robots or something. But like, if you look at again, like games like the Marvel vs. Capcom, like the, it, it looks like there's two frames per second for everything, and I, I don't know why. Like compared to that, this <laughs> yeah, is smooth. Yeah, some anime games as well. It yeah. Very, very like. Well, they look 
like you're watching a regular anime at like 12 fps yeah i don't know if that was a video at 60 though if they just put out a video at 30 that said the technology is there if you have 60 frames you should put it out at 60 frames i kind of do hope it is uh, it does come out at 60 cause mm. it just I'm it sure it feel nice. Yeah, no, I'm sure it was gonna uh, come out at sixty. I, it's uh, I think it because uh, it has the Street Fighter style of like uh 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 you know kind of well, thing. Stop, stop, start. Yeah, yeah, the, exactly. The, so I think that's what people think is low frame rate because they're stupid. Um, but if this is fighting game people uh, complaining that they should know better. <laughs> I don't think that was fighting game people complaining that. I oh, think it was like very uh, maybe that's amateur, case, but... maybe fighting game like you know more amateur than I am a fighting game person kind of people complaining because you, know, you know YouTube comments. How they go. Anyway, this is going to be exciting, hopefully. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, happy that someone is on it and making it. That's pretty cool. Uh, speaking of uh, stupid people on, on the internet, um, there was a uh, study about stupid people. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, on uh, what was the website called? I forgot. No, it's a journal called something it link in the description Boss if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like an open access journal. Uh, for uh, for scientific um, research, and uh, they did it. I actually haven't gone too deep, so I don't know how many or a sample size was, etc. But they did a study on um, uh, people playing Halo Three, and there being mostly men who play it. Then they would someone would join their ranks, and they would be female and uh, females, and uh, females. they would observe uh, how the men would react to them. And it turns out that, uh, well, this is the conclusion of the study, um, that the men who are become aggressive towards the, the women players who um, turn up are the ones who are the shittest at the game. And apparently th <laughs> this was uh, like consistent uh, across their, um, their study. And the people who are good at the game, they are you know, welcoming and trying to sort of integrate the um, women players. Into I believe the sample size is... Two? How much, sorry? Very Say again? Big. 82. So that's actually not too bad. I mean, some, some studies have sample size of 30, so... Yeah, that's more like a... That's true, and that's more typical of, like, psychological studies as well. They seem to yeah. have much smaller sample sizes. 82 is not great, but it's enough to draw, like, Significant... Uh, conclusions. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, I think so. So, well, I mean, yeah, again, I, I probably don't have the ability to assess whether or not this was, you know, properly conducted research, but... uh. Interesting findings, nonetheless. Yeah, and somewhat satisfying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now I'm going to refer everyone who is shitty or being sexist to this our, uh, this research. <laughs> yeah. Send them so the link. You play really badly, you go. You <laughs> must be a sexist. <laughs> if you're really sexist. You're right. You must be bad. <laughs> yeah, when XCOM 2 comes out, this is going to be my go-to comment if someone sucks. <laughs> Just send them a link to this uh, study, and that's it. That's exactly. <laughs> Speaking of XCOM, um, the people behind the Long War uh, mod, which is you know the mod for uh, the now what we call the first XCOM, mm -hmm. uh, not the original XCOM, the first X XCOM. XCOM one. XCOM one. <laughs> X X bone. Uh, anyway, uh, it's the same. Uh, so they are done with the famously done with the mod. Mod is ready up just before XCOM two comes out. Uh, it is That's perfect. yeah. It is what they wanted it to be, and I think everyone's very happy. And people who use it are very happy. And I will probably never use it, but I'm happy that everyone's very happy about it. Um, <laughs> the reason this is here is not because the mod is done, but because um, the team behind it are not going to be, I believe, modding anything for XCOM 2, even though it's going to be much easier to mod stuff for XCOM 2 because they are going to be working on their own project, which also has a <laughs> shitty name um, called. Uh, Terra Invicta or something like that, and um, it's but the concept is pretty cool. It's um, alien invasion again, surprise, yep. but uh, on a grand strategy level. Ooh, this is something we actually okay. you you and I have discussed. Like, how would this work, and would it be possible to make a game like that, etc. So I am very keen to see. I mean, they I, I don't know when I'm going to see this, but uh, when they have whatever some when they have something to show for it. Uh, how they managed to go about this It'd be pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah very keen to hear uh, more about that. Although I don't know, I mean, at the same time, it'd be very nice if they did do some mod stuff for XCOM 2. I don't know, I don't know if they've ruled it out completely or if this is going to take up all of that time. Then yeah. again, I suppose it being made easier and with all the inspiration of the Long War having been made, maybe it's not a big deal. 
from some other people pick up the slack and, and make something of this kind for XCOM 2 when it is out. Maybe I'm just worried about nothing. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's going to be yeah people who would be very much into modding XCOM 2. I'm also judging by how big the community actually is nowadays and how yeah. hyped everyone is for it. Um, it's gonna be cool. I'm looking forward to it. When's it out? <laughs> <laughs> it begins uh, November. Yeah. <laughs> November. <laughs> yeah, some sometime in November. Well, so far anyway. That's what they say. Oh, they revealed the new. Actually, I'm gonna. Should I jump to that first? Did I have like a specific? No, I'm gonna go jump to that. I'm gonna go to XCOM 2 in a second here. But first, we're gonna talk about drugs. drugs. We're gonna talk. About, we're gonna talk about. I like the way you put it. Um, was it? Uh, comes it, comes, to it comes to esports. Comes to esports. Um. <laughs> So, surprise, people who do esports take um, enhancement, uh, performance enhancement drugs. Um, yep. I was so surprised I had a heart attack and now I'm dead. So, <laughs> yeah. the way this got revealed was, um, in my opinion, pretty interesting. Uh, this was a not about the subject at all kind of interview between for like one Counter-Strike guy whose name I forgot and was interviewing another Counter-Strike whose name I never remembered. And if, <laughs> if you are into Counter-Strike, you probably know who they are and so it doesn't really matter. So the guy on the right was interviewing the guy on the left, and the guy on the left at one point goes, "Oh yeah, remember at the is it called um, ESL? Is no, is it the whatever the term the main, ESL? Yeah, 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 the main the main um, apparently the main Counter Strike tournament. Um, the comms there were really fucked up, and then he pauses for a second, like kind of contemplating if he should say this. He's like, ah, fuck it, I don't even care. We were all on uh, the ADHD drug, the ad 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 adrenal, ad Adderall. Adderall, Adderall. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, and then he was like, yeah, everyone's on Adderall at ESL. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then they carry oh, on man. talking about something else. Um, and, but, the, you know, the more mainstream media picked up uh, all this, this stuff. The guy who was interviewing him, he's like, he's a YouTuber. He has like 35,000, yeah. you know, whatever subscribers. So he, he's in, as big as, I, I don't know, like Eurogamer probably who ran the article. A, mid, a mid-sized uh, splash. <laughs> Enough to like get some somebody to notice. Yeah, and now they're actually taking action. Um, the ESL yeah. got a bit nervous about this. And they were like, oh, 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 yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. Drugs, drugs. Yeah, yeah, I remember those. And um, they... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty much what they said. Like, because... You don't need this to suddenly have a drug policy in your tournament. Uh, yeah. if, if you're running a professional tournament with like money prizes, you know. Uh, yeah. So they were now, which like they're gonna work on their drug policy. But meanwhile, uh, for the next uh, event they're holding, they are gonna do um, random skin tests on, I think that very drug, or something. Oh, okay. So that could be detected with some simple skin test. Yeah. Seemingly, um, okay. so that's what that's what they said. That was in our official, yeah. you know. I'm looking forward to the lab that's going to spend time making a <laughs> untestable Adderall. Yeah. Speaking see, of, this is the thing yeah. as well. The kind of performance enhancing for this game is really different to the performance enhancing you need for like athletic stuff. So you're probably going to get people like bombing out from shit that fries their brains and stuff, <laughs> all chasing that like Starcraft pot. I can't wait. It's. I'm sure StarCraft people take drugs too for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I, I, what Adderall does, I, I, as I understand, it makes you focus better or something. So I hmm. guess you'd kind of get into the flow. Hmm. Um, I don't know if that's. I heard of a uh, of a Counter Strike team that did ketamine. Does that does work? It help them kind of. I, I can't. I don't think it would, but apparently it helped them. Oh, maybe it was um, placebo. I know that. I know that at certain times. Uh, Certain amounts of weed help me focus on battlefield, but yeah. those those days are long gone. <laughs> and the, that battlefield is long gone too. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to another esports thing, which is um, Chaos Reborn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Apparently, they're uh, aiming, or as Arami said, they're tracking for uh, end of summer release. Um, mm. And I. I don't know. I find it hard to believe that they're gonna release it end of summer. Like, what? It's not that like the current state of Chaos Reborn is is fucked. It's not. Mm. It, it's fully functional in whatever it has. But right. it's. I would like. I would expect it to be much more. And I can't imagine them managing to put all of this in in like a month. What's, <clears throat> what's left for them to put in that they've said they're gonna? There's this old single player thing which is kind of taking shape now. But is there much else? Uh, well, there's a single player, but this it has a lot of elements that are not there. Um, so, right. like the ability to for you to design your own 
as a oh, lord yeah, or whatever kind of dungeons. Like, dungeon editor yeah having a big job like, having a uh, the fucking hotline people are still working on that as well <laughs> too. the ability, ability to run have and run the guild um then as a god to have this whole st social structure of having the demi gods worship you and having i the can't wait to neglect that horribly <laughs> blessings and whatever did they create by the way um no worries who is another god like yourself ed um <laughs> thanks right um Oh, by the way, before I go on to that, the image that I, I chose there, um, I, I think is, is really good. This is a very sad Julian Gallup playing, uh, looking at XCOM. Not really playing, I don't know if he's playing it, but he's looking at XCOM the board game. And I, I've, I, I've had the same reaction when, I was, when we tried to play XCOM the board game, as, as Julian's <laughs> face uh, is, is expressing right now. I, I feel that... Maybe someone could Photoshop this background so that he's on like a raft that he made himself and he's trying to get back to land. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what it kind of looks like. Sad. Yeah. Sadness. And um, I was, so I was going to ask you, if I know that No Worries got a concept uh, art shown to him of his god, like what he's yeah. going to look like. Did you have this? Did this happen to oh, you I as well? I haven't done it yet. I recently got a Kickstarter update about it saying I need to send over... My email address, because they're switching to a, a mailing list a system for the gods, to streamline, and uh, to kind of reiterate that I should send over my design details. They say that they've got three of them done and dusted of, I guess it was like 20-something okay. uh, gods to do. So they're, they're on it now. It looks like they've switched to got to make gods now, which makes sense. Uh, and I do need to respond to that when I next get some free time, so probably after summer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so that's that's my inside scoop um, on where that's going, at least on the god side. Do, wait, do they have 20 gods? There was, there was, I mean, there were like, yeah, I think so. Like, okay. some after the fact, some were already going to be gods. Uh, I think there were quite a lot, actually. Uh, I feel like it was 20. Okay, cool. Um, which brings us to uh, another game that Julian Gallup didn't work on, XCOM 2. Uh, back to XCOM 2, really. Um, they released <laughs> a new um, new screenshot of their old alien, really, uh, but a reworked version of the mutant, who looks oh. cooler, um, except for the fact that his gun is pretty much well. It's like a, if if the people in um, well, jeez, I forgot the game. We know the one where the cover shooter for Xbox. Uh, Gears of War. Gears of War, yeah. It, it looks like it's from Gears of War, except it shoots plasma. I have for comparison, no, I have no. another image of the mutants, the from mutants from the XCOM one, and then the mutant from the yeah. XCOM two. Um, which is we, I guess they just gave him a melee as well. I guess melee is a big thing in XCOM two, so everyone, I, I, his gun suggests that he would touch someone with it, intimately. Hmm. Um, so possibly that's oh, what's yeah. going on. They look, it, look, it looks cooler. I'm not sure that is, because the second image is from actual, like, it's a game screenshot. The other one could be a bit touched up. Yeah. E screenshot. But uh, def there's a lot more, it seems like there's a lot more definition to the his uh, model there than there yeah, is. It looks kind of like a pinkly Renus, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's cool. I mean, they, they were kind of that way. They're meant to be sort of that way anyway. Um, but, yeah, I don't know if they actually have more detail in the game. They kind of mentioned this that they would be, you know, since they're doing it only on PC, sort of. Which is which is weird because today I saw they tweeted something and someone was like, Oh, can you confirm if if XCOM 2 is coming to consoles so I can get hyped or something like that? And then the Fire Axis game was like um <laughs> was like, Yeah, sure. Feel free to get hyped. Yeah. Anyway, I'm have, off bye. Have a good day, Commander. And that's what they said. And I was like didn't you guys say what? it's not coming? So what? I, uh, anyway, what? I don't, I don't even, I don't know if that they was. They need to not say anything about that until the PC release is done. Yeah, I, I think so. I think they just need to let it, let it go now. They, they already like made a commitment and just like stick to it. They and did. Then... This is for the PC gamers. Yeah, except that it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so it was, it was a, uh, this is for PC gamers, Kappa. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> Uh, speaking of aliens, um, I know th this this excited you very much, Ed. Um, possible possibility that Space Jam Two will be made. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know much more than <laughs> I just saw this, and apparently this has been like a uh, a sort of on and off like 
flirtation uh, for for years and everyone. And I don't know if it's like kind of big rumory thing, but uh, yeah, apparently Warner Brothers has some kind of formal agreement with LeBron James with the goal of making future TV, film, and original digital programs. Mm. So presumably it will be a skating game with that fucking Hugo the <laughs> So is... Uh, <clears throat> is, is... What is he doing playing this violin? <laughs> that's his... He uh... plays violin, he just looks like a prop. That's, <laughs> Wait, that's his Google Plus image uh, profile picture. Um... <laughs> <laughs> there's and There's like questions online as well. I was like, I just, I just typed in like LeBron James violin and then people were like, how good is he really at playing my <laughs> It's like, I... um, yeah, team pep talk. He should just do a fucking sick solo on his violin. I wonder if um, they just think that. Wait, is Michael Jordan's around? Right, he's just old. Is that why they're not doing it again with him? They should do like with yeah, Arnie. Think... You know, like Arnie's in every movie. Oh my, oh god, Michael Jordan. Let me have a look. He's still up. He's still doing stuff. Yeah, cool. Well, I mean, they should have done it with him. Maybe he's held like a cameo or something in the. In the in the, in the yeah. Space Jam two, Space Jam two more jam. To, uh... <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna continue with movie news here. Um, yeah, why not? Uh, which one is this one? Ah, uh, yes, they're making a movie about emoji, or with emoji, or in in emoji. The only is Kappa gonna be in it? I don't think so. Um, but it's just like I when I saw this I was like that's a joke isn't it and it's not a joke. Um, Sony Pictures something something um, won a, the bid for this. He was, they were bidding together. Who owns Emoji? No one. That's the point. No, the guy wrote a script. Um, some dude. He made some films that I never heard about before, and uh, he offered it to three different studios. And uh, Sony something picture something offered the most money. So this is gonna get made now. Um, and that's all everyone knows, but I li- I stole this image from uh, Vice article about it. Uh, I like how you know the the t- remake of Titanic with emoji. Anyway, that thumb looks very creepy in the screenshot. I don't know. He's Can giving a thumbs up thumb looks- to viewers because he you know. I feel like he's he's nudging her boob with yeah. his thumb. No, he's ah is that's what you thought? Because I thought he's just his his zip is down and he just <laughs> you know anyway. Yeah, that's that's the thing now. It's it's the world we live in now. An emoji movie. Um, watch this space. Is there is there a word for something that's more postmodern than postmodern? Like the the post postmodern. <clears throat> I think it's called post. Like a meta postmodern. I think it's called posthuman. To be honest, I'm not no no joke. <laughs> like that's because after postmodernism is posthumanism. Oh really? Yeah, 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 academically speaking, philosophically. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, this is something I'm gonna have to look into later. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I guess emoji is many in many ways is posthuman. Um, but this is not the last of movie news we have today, uh, and this is probably the funniest one. So Universal Studios France or Universal France um, tried to oh. D- DMCA <laughs> themselves. Um, I don't think they were very successful. <laughs> so someone du- taking you offline. <laughs> someone dug up um, uh, their like request to Google to ban certain. Uh, addresses that are distributing apparently or they're some part of movies of theirs and this in this case this is Jurassic World um, and one of them is their local host <laughs> so um, that, was, that was pretty funny I think they, they did pretty well yeah, there apparently a copy of Jurassic World was sent to this company that apparently deals with um, pressing Blu-rays yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> huge huge scandal <laughs> so we try to um veer between bad news and good news so this is good news obviously that they're trying to DMCA themselves um, bad news is that Heart of Gaming the only dedicated arcade in London got robbed um, I got I think, shit robbed yeah they're, the arcades are safe but they stole a lot of PS4s and Wii U's um, which uh, they also screen, had and couple, yeah, a couple TVs I think got, got stolen I don't think they actually had any security besides doors um, yeah, I don't think so. And if I know anything from like you know prison architects or that kind of game, you know you should probably have some alarm system. Uh, and there's and he said that he's now going to have alarm system. Uh, after that's I, a good idea. Yeah, I think so. Um, he is um, the guy in in charge of it is doing a, a funding campaign, and uh, he with the five thousand pound goal. And last time I checked before the show, it was uh, thirty seven hundred and plus. Uh, it's almost four thousand now. Three nine five seven. Yeah, yeah. Thirty I'm, of that is mine. 
Excellent. I'm I'm pretty sure that he is he's gonna get it and he's gonna get yeah. stuff replaced. So, uh, pretty cool. And also this raised awareness of um heart of gaming. So maybe he robbed himself. Anyway. Yeah, I got a bonus for it. <laughs> yeah. His house is full of TVs and consoles. <laughs> you can play uh, them now. Yes, there's uh, a couple of places talking about it. A couple of games places going. Oh, this happened. Oh. Yeah, and a lot of people play paid quite a bit of money. There was there are people like above quite a few people above hundred pound donations. Um, oh, nice. Through the cause, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, and I can't tell what exactly is the next. Oh, I know what this is. Uh, this is um, the end of gerbilism, video games gerbilism. Um, there was an article on um, MCV or whatever their magazine is called uh, about how Edblock is gonna, if anything is gonna end video game gerbilism, it's going to <laughs> Edblock. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. This entire article, like I just, you, I saved you time. By <laughs> by saying this because there's no point. I, I was reading it as like, okay, you said that or you already you're this is you're just repeating. Andro, Andro, I've got a question for you. <laughs> yeah. you. Remember when music stopped happening because of downloading? Yeah, right. It was horrible. I I miss yeah. I miss music. It's a shame. I I, I you know I, I I see my kids because I've got kids and I, I say, <laughs> Jimmy, I I'd like to sing you a song. <laughs> I've forgotten, and he says, Dad, what's a song? And, and I, you cry. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is the most dinosaur thing any fucker has ever said, uh, and it's such a uh, such an ass backwards way of, of dealing with the problem as well. Like the entire article, it's it's almost self aware. It goes, uh, these sites, you know, you just have one ad that that just abuses the trust of the person going to the website. Just one ad, one page covered in millions of horrible pop ups, and then people will just install ad blockers because they're tech savvy, intelligent people. Uh, who should be treated as such. <laughs> and it, it, it's like, ah, oh, well, you know, it's really, it's you, you guys who... No, 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 you fuckers. It's you guys. The burden is on you <laughs> to change and create an environment where you can make money. And if, if the consumer and the customer can go and get something better for free, they will, and it's on you to change. And that annoys me so much. <laughs> and I don't even like using Adblock that much. I, I, I use it sparingly. I pretty much have it as a defensive measure against bullshit, but I turn it off on stuff I like. But I still think this guy's full of shit. <laughs> yeah, it was it was very straight. St whenever I, if I feel like I read a paragraph, second one, it's like, okay, that paragraph's the same as the first one. Read the third one, okay, they're saying the same thing. Sort of, and it's like, and then, then you know the entire article. I actually did go through the entire article. It was the exact same thing. What yeah. I found interesting about Adblock, and I didn't know they were doing this. Um, so my immediate question was, I, was, I read, I was, because I, I knew, obviously, I never used Adblock. I know it exists, whatever. I know what it does. Uh, so I don't really think about it because I don't use it. And um, when I was reading this, I was immediate question was like, wait, how did Adblock make money? Because it's a business, right? <laughs> um, and apparently there's two ways they make money. One is donations by happy customers. Yay! And the second one is uh, by racketeering. Extortion. Yeah. They, they go to people who are blocked through their website and go, if you pay us, and it's undisclosed amount. Like, it doesn't say. So, like, oh, fill out the form and we'll be in touch. Um, it's like, it, is, it is like organized crime almost. And uh, then they, I guess, get in touch and they pay some, some, and they add them to the whitelist, uh, which people can um, then opt in to have, like, oh, use the. You can, they can, you can still ignore the whitelist and be like, oh, fuck yeah, it, I don't, yeah, yeah. But then if you're yeah. like, oh, I feel like a nice guy today, and uh, then you turn it on and those ads will appear, or whatever, which seems like a horrible idea anyway. Um, but yeah, I don't. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I don't think that's. I don't think it's gonna work, unfortunately. Uh, a funny thing, another funny thing is that um, obviously they are cutting into Google's ad revenue, right? Yeah, but, of course. And they're hosted by, they're, they, to get this for Chrome, you go to Google App Store and... Is it and there? Install. I don't think it's yeah, there anymore. It is. Oh, really? Today, check today. Oh, okay. I, I, thought I, I, I thought I remember an uh, article from months and months ago, which was like Google going, yeah, we're not hosting these fucking guys. <laughs> they are, right? They, I, they were there today. Maybe they're going to get rid of them, but like currently... Um, maybe, one thing maybe they were reinstated in the meantime or something. Maybe right? one thing that the article mentions also, and I kind of thought like, okay, that could probably happen, is um, that Google can just sort of disable them off their platform, like they they control Chrome, right? They can just be like, no, it can't block ads on Chrome. Somehow make make them 
their plugins yeah, it, not it work. It seems like it's something they could do something about. Yeah. That there will be something of an arms race. Yeah, since they are losing money on that anyway. That annoying distraction race, really, it should be called. <laughs> oh, speaking of annoying distraction race, there's, there's another race, and it's for the race uh, for the heart of gamers. And now, as a part of that race, Xbox is going to have mouse support. Nice. So it's just kind of a shit, uncustomizable PC now. Sweet. Yeah, it's like a Steam box. <laughs> oh god why um and it's it's not as cool as having a train as your head um as uh we recently turned out in fallout one of the fallout 3 dlcs which i, I guess there are a myriad of um hmm. you get on a tra you fix a train uh, like a subway train and you get on it and go to a different location so nothing very interesting about that uh, but it uh, turns out the way they managed to do this is they made the train into an, like a, a wearable item in the game and as you get into it you wear it as a hat uh, or I, I think as, technically it's an extension of your arm or something um, so it's not it's not what like you can see on the image it's not exactly that that's a, that's I think yeah. is artist interpretation of what it would look <laughs> like um, it's actually like a sort of a helmet type thing where yeah. and there, there's a like you can see in if you watch a video of someone's playthrough of that moment, it's, it looks like he's wearing a giant helmet, sort of on on their head. Um, but it was interesting that uh, like you know this sort of game development solution uh, came to surface. Yeah. Um, Reminds me of uh, that game with the bushes underground actually being trees and stuff. Yeah, that is uh, the War Machine or War Machines yes. or whatever. Yeah, War Machine Tactics. I think that's what the that game. Warm Ashen. Warm a Ashes. Uh, after the game burned down, tactics. <laughs> Your comments inbox. Yeah. Uh, if only Fallout Three wasn't just like a weird shade of green, maybe I would ever play it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this like, entire game is green. I guess they're like I, I, radiation. I now a thumbs down. <laughs> it just says weird shade of green. <laughs> now it's in game eight thousand six hundred and forty. <laughs> I have I have like fifteen hours actually. I did play it a little bit. Um, now back to good news. Uh, Rust are continuing their campaign uh, for um, realism, and just the way people don't have control over their uh, race and sex in in real life, they don't have that in Rust either. So this the race thing was a was a, was new. I think we covered it like two or three yeah. weeks ago. Now they're also introducing um, female um, character models. And they will also be assigned randomly, um, just like yeah. they're dealing with race, which is really cool and makes me want to play a, yeah. a Rust, which the Desire yeah. didn't have previously. Uh, they also have yeah. cool um, ideas for armor building, where like you take objects from the world and they put like you strap them onto your body. <laughs> like there's there's the one image I don't have it here, but it's an image where a guy is wearing a like a stop sign on his crotch or something, so he, yeah. <laughs> his crotch is protected. And I there's another to do dude that fashionably, not even for protection. Yeah. I know. <laughs> It's it's you know foreplay. Um, <clears throat> and there's another one where he um, there's another guy has um, bones like animal bones attached to him and strapped to him like again like armor. And that's the guy with with like planks of wood. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Um, exactly. Yeah. But another good sex move. Um, <laughs> now we're going back to horrible news. So this is all like yeah. back and forth. Uh, the next one is uh, the the Jeep hacking news, which was interesting. Oh yeah. Um, so. To... Good news for a bystander who likes like sci-fi. Yeah, exactly. Um, so they arranged to do this. Like uh, the, the on the image you see, the guy on the left is a journalist from Wired, and so he uh, participated in his experiment to essentially to bring, I guess, fame to these hackers or like who are uh, white hat hackers, um, yeah. and um, uh, probably to bring this issue to the. Um, knowledge and information of the auto uh, making industry um, because it is pretty bad like they they were controlling his car so the guy the journalist was driving the car down um, a busy um, motorway and they took control of it or through internet usage so they were in the at their home with the laptop and um, they hacked in and then took, took over the entire control of the car because it has it is internet enabled or whatever it has internet access um, through, I think, 4G, 3G, whatever. And um, what, if you have a laptop with internet access, you can technically do this. Uh, so they were like, first they started like easy and they started like turning on and off his like heating and 
starting to freeze him in the car, then started playing like Kanye kind of, kind of West uh, songs on the on the stereo, then the the wipers went on and the water went on and whatever, and then they disabled his transmission and then he killed his brakes or something like that. And then he there's a picture of him being in the ditch. I don't know if it was like staged or not, but like he he was right. like, there's there's a bit where he was freaking out. I think it's also there's a video of him like doing this and like he's freaking out actually, even though he knows like they are they could like yeah. just stop the car or whatever. Yeah. So uh, it was just some scary shit. Like it was total control of the car. I think he, he can't even get out. That like they could just crash it into something. Um, yeah. as you're inside. So it is very cyberpunk. I guess that's the good bit about it, and that maybe they'll notice and fix it now? <laughs> no, you know what happens when shit like this happens? They go, no, the key is to not do that then, idiot hack. Uh, and then they arrest everyone in this image, all of them that are in jail now, they're dead, they've been shot, executed against the wall. <laughs> Meanwhile, please buy more Jeeps. They're gonna release... The US Army is buying 10,000 Jeeps. <laughs> Uh, they're going to release part of their code uh, again as their awareness campaign, and they're also doing. Um, uh, their oh, I look forward to their tweet where they say we are no longer going to release this code. <laughs> <laughs> there was a bit where some other car was doing the similar thing, and they didn't even. You know how there's the HTTP S thing where like it's like the secure one, and they were not even like they didn't even take the basic measures of security like um but it was it was not jeep it was someone else i forgot who was doing that and then they find like someone finally got to them and be like you can't do this um yeah well apparently jeep still did anyway so they're gonna be like talking about this more and um i again trying to raise awareness because it's people could fucking die um yeah but to uh sort of round out our uh our show today we have two more very good news uh, one of them is um, an image, the second one is a video. So we're going to start with an image, and this is okay. an image of our potential future home, Earth 2, which has finally okay. been discovered. Um, it's um, roughly Earth size, first uh, roughly Earth size planet in a habitable zone of very similar star to our own. Pretty uh, cool. Yeah, it's uh, the only problem with it is that it's I think fifteen or fourteen hundred yeah light years <laughs> away, and this been a, has been a problem for some time now. I mean, we before we discovered this thing, and we don't really have a solution for that one. But um, yeah, yeah, rocky world, uh, one point five billion years older than ours, probably um, double the uh, gravity, probably. So we couldn't really enjoy it that much anyway. Yeah, but yeah. um. Especially after traveling for 1,400 years, I imagine we'd have gotten pretty frail. <laughs> yeah, we'd, and then we would have to use that time, the traveling time, to become boneless. <laughs> and then maybe... <laughs> then we'd just squidge around on the ground. We would we'd snack. Around. We'd be like sna sna snack. snacking. Um, so yeah, but it's pretty cool. I mean, first of a kind of, kind of similar to what's going on here sort of thing. Maybe they could direct their one of those things. You know, there's... Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hawking's uh, announced that he's looking for aliens harder than ever now because he didn't manage to get the um, the unified theory of world or whatever because he was working on it his entire life and now he's kind of pretending he didn't really fail at that and then he's going to look for aliens instead. Yeah. So, I mean, he did a lot of useful shit. Don't get me wrong, but um, so he's, he's, he's he was uh, he did like this press event where he was like, "Aliens, they're out there. We're going to get them." Uh, so maybe they can direct their alien listening devices to this planet and be like, well, I mean... Yeah, maybe in... they can focus it somehow and get slightly more, like, detail on the yeah. information. That'd be cool. Uh, apparently they're... Still going... hearing old-timey radio. They, they're putting a, quite a bit of money into it, and it's mostly some private money um, from some American billionaires uh, into looking for aliens. Um, so, I don't know, maybe one of those things, you know, how um, billionaires you want to live forever and they try to, like... Yeah, I was just thinking, yeah. I was just thinking, this is one of those weird... Things where they're like, I have everything except I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's I forgot the name. It's some. It has a Russian name, but he's some American, Russian millionaire, billionaire guy. Put a lot of money into it. They probably, probably got to cover hundred times more of the sky we can cover from Earth to be listening to shit um, than ever before. So oh. it, it's a pretty big. It seems like a big effort. So this is like unconnected to this, but I was wondering. If now we could connect this to this, since we have something to listen for, um, 14 billion years away, which, I mean, even if we hear something from there, they, they could have all died after that, uh, which is a bit of a problem. Yeah, yeah, in, in 1400 years, a lot can happen. I yeah. mean, imagine somebody pointed their shit at us. Well, first of all, we wouldn't be transmitting anything. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, it would be the year 600 and something, so we'd be, what, doing Crusades, kind of? The sort Roman of, Empire yeah. would have been kind of... Dead fun. already. But Byzantine yeah. would be pretty big, I guess. Yeah, yeah so stuff, some stuff would be happening yeah. somewhere. Byzantine radio stations and... <laughs> Byzantine radio. <laughs> <laughs> dark Ages, rock, dark rock ages, anyway. So um, uh, the thing is that everyone like flying towards us will be getting slightly sped up radio. So when they come over and they're like, "Oh, we're going to play music, we're going to jam," they're going to be slightly out of tune. So the, that's something to watch out for as well. They're gonna, but they're gonna invent a new genre that way. It's going to be the speed alien rock, and uh, all the rage. You know, kids love it, parents hate it, the media doesn't <laughs> understand. Uh, politicians are briefed on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have a little tape with it all kind of condensed. They watch it in the morning with their cocaine pops. Exactly. Their cocaine pops. Um, oh. Yeah. So the last thing we're going to show is a, a very um, beautiful uh, com computer advertisement video from 1980s uh, celebrating Amiga computers um, because it's 30 years anniversary, I think, yesterday or today of the Amiga being either made or released or something like that. So. Uh, it's really good. Uh, this one's going to be with sound. Uh, you and I won't hear it through the thing unless you listen to the stream. And then you could listen to it and all. I, I, it's my request that everyone who is singing along, it's, not, it's pretty easy to sing along to this song. And uh, you'll understand why when it starts. It's the word of me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I'm just going to let you enjoy it. It is the best machine that is around anywhere in the world. The professional machine of the future. How would I describe it? I think it's fantastic. Awesome. It's yeah, going to skyrocket. Only Amiga makes I mean, it possible. Only Amiga makes it possible. Amiga's got the guts to do things that you can't do on other hardware. And it does all the work for you. Wow. State-of-the-art technology at a price that everybody can afford. The Amiga is the best graphics machine available in the world today. Only Amiga. 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 Only Amiga makes it possible. Only Amiga makes it possible. Only Amiga. Outrageous. Makes it possible. Fabulous. Only Amiga makes it possible. Only Amiga. This is it. This is this is Amiga. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, not much has changed in how computers are advertised. It's true. Over over the years, I I don't think that you know PC versus Mac or whatever thing is any better than this. To be honest, I think this is a bit more entertaining than that. Um, I'll yeah. I'd rather listen to this lady singing about Amiga than watch another PC versus Mac commercial. Not that they make them anymore, but because. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. There's no, there's no competition. They're all both dying. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. It's all mobile. Yeah, it should be like mobile, non-mobile. Like two guys, and one is mobile and one is non-mobile. So one of them's just quivering and shaking, and the other one's <laughs> on the ground holding a rock. Yeah. And moving. Like... Like, we're giving them free ideas again, Ned. I don't. I think we should <laughs> just start charging for this. <laughs> you know you're gonna. <laughs> You know you're gonna see this like in a bit. Someone's doing mobile and mobile thing, and the guy's hugging the rock, and you'll be like, "Ah, oh, I should have, I should have just patented this." I could this. just point to this video and be like, "Money, <laughs> money, money." That's that's also a good. Money. I think that's also a good ad for um, 
mobile gaming maybe i don't know like someone doing that just money and pointing at themselves money. <laughs> yeah money money <laughs> money money showing a wallet uh, and it's like it's empty and you just go like money moths come out and they fly up to the camera and they go money <laughs> on this happy financial <laughs> thought we would like to end this this show this episode um covered a lot of grounds today yeah a lot of things happened good yeah um if you're watching this on youtubes please press the buttons appropriate buttons uh, behave appropriately please uh, if you want to watch this live, we go live every Thursday, 10 p.m. Yep. BST. Try to and do it at 10 p.m. BST. We maybe. try to do it at 10 p.m. Roughly. I mean, you just stick around. Come around 10 p.m., stick around. It's going to happen. You know You know it's going to happen. So um, Only it's... Amiga. Only Amiga can... That's why we. That's why I said in the beginning that we only use Amiga for the show. Bye. Bye. We did it. We did. Yeah. With help, with with a little bit of help from Amiga, but other than that, I mean, it was pretty much us. <laughs>